Welcome! In this series of short videos, we will look at topics common to both the PowerBasic console and Windows compilers. Today we will look again at the array sort command. Back in May 2020, we produced a video on array sorting. We're going to revisit that video today. Some of the subscribers on YouTube have spotted that there was an area of the sorting I hadn't fully covered, and that's what we're going to cover today. First of all, we'll have a quick look at the code as it stands at the moment. We've included two of our libraries, the Common Display Library and the File Handling Routines Library. The purpose of this application is to sort a CSV file. In this CSV file we have a number of rows and a number of columns. We have the first name, surname, address, telephone number and account number. Now the account number field is a four digit, zero filled account number. And what we were seeking to do was to sort this file in an array on one of the columns. We're going to pick the account number, which is the fifth column, as being the sorting field. How we did this was first of all to read the entire file into an array using one of the common functions, read the file into an array. Having loaded that, we would then display that on the log on the screen. We would then prepare a sorting field which would then be populated with the fifth column. And then we would use the array sort command to sort this new array and we would tag the main array containing the entire file. And then we would print out the content of our work array back to the screen. So if we run that program now, you will see first of all it prints out the array as it comes in from the file, and then it sorts the array on the account number, and the, and the records are sorted in order. Now, the one thing we didn't cover in the previous video was that these sortings are done as alphanumeric sorts, not as numeric sorts. Now, it's working in this case because all the numbers in this fifth column are in fact zero filled, so that alphabetically 0067 comes before 0132. Now there will be times when you're sorting arrays where the value of a column is in fact numeric. So it'll either be a whole number or it'll all have values after the decimal point. So how can we handle a sort where the column we're sorting is in fact not a string but a number? Well what we're going to do is we're going to comment out this section of the code. And we're going to replace this section of code with a generic function whose job it will be to sort our array. Since in future applications we may well be using the array sort command, it seems reasonable to design a generic function to perform an array sort. So that's what we're going to do today. So our new array sort command will want to create any separate library. What kind of parameters will this function actually need? Well, it'll need to know the array we actually want to sort. So we'll give that in as the first parameter. In this case, str work. Now we'll need to know what kind of sort type it's going to be. Is it going to be a string sort? Is it going to be a long? Is it going to have a double, a single, or a currency? We'll need to know which field to sort on. We'll also need to know the delimiter of the array, because they're all not necessarily CSV files. We need to know the sort order, is it going to be ascending or descending? And should any error occur, we'll need to know what the error is. So we're going to create some local variables which we can use to populate these parameters. So one for the error, one for the field we're actually interested in sorting on, one for the delimiter, one for the sort type, and one for the sort order. And based on the values, we'll put these in. We're looking for field number five. It's a comma delimited file. It's going to be a long, and we want to make it ascending. So that's us slotting those in. We now have all our parameters in place. If the function returns true, then it's managed to sort it successfully. Otherwise, it's unable to sort. And we can put a message out to a log to let us know that's the case. And at the end we can print the details out. 
So let's create our new library. So we're going to call this PB sorting and we will save this into our library folder. So there we have our parameters. We're passing in the str work array by ref as a string. We're passing the sort type, the field we want to sort on, the delimiter, and the sort order, and we're going to be passing back an output parameter, which will be an error. So since this is going to be a generic routine, we want to make it as flexible as possible. The array we're passing may start at 0, it may start at 1, it may start at a minus number. Therefore, we'll want to pick up the upper bounding and the lower bounding of these. So we're going to put those into two variables, max records and base record. Max records will contain the upper bounding of the array and the base record will contain the lower bounding. That way we will know where the array starts and ends. And we can set the str error to be blank initially on the assumption that there was no error at the beginning. And we will create a local variable called long r, which we're going to use to populate our tagging array. And if our delimiter is comma, we're going to make that a blank to make use of the parsing commands special facilities for CSV files. So we'll test on the sort type first of all, and we'll do this in a select statement. So if this is a string, the first thing to do is to dimension our tag array. So here we are now dimensioning our tag array from the base record to the maximum records. So that could be from 0 to 10, from 1 to 10, or whatever the numbers happen to be. Having dimensioned it, we can then populate our tag array with the values in our main array using a quite simple for next loop going from the base record to the max records and populating the tag array using a long r and a parse command. And this will populate our tag array. Now we could sort at that point, but we need to know whether it's an ascending or a descending sort. So we'll do a simple test on that. And for the ascending, we will slot in the array sort command to work on ascending, exactly as we did in the original code. And for descending, like so. So this handles strings quite happily. Now, how do we handle numbers? Well, we would perform exactly the same logic, only with a different type. So if we were handling longs as opposed to strings, and in this case it is going to be a long, we would want to dimension the tagging array as a long. The for next loop would be very similar. The only difference being we would use the val command to turn the value we pull back from the work array into a number, like so. And then the logic after that for the sorting would be very similar again, but when sorting a numeric array, we don't need to put in the collate command because the collate command is no longer relevant because it's a numeric array. Now, if we have a look at the CSV file, at the moment, all the values in here are zero filled, which means it would sort alphabetically. If we remove the leading zeros, it would no longer sort in an alphabetical sense. So if we save that now, now we will need to include a new library at the top. And let's just try a quick compile to make sure we haven't missed anything. OK. So if we try running that now, we would see that the values, despite having no leading zero, now sort numerically. So if we change the code to say rather than being a sort type of long, we change that to string and left it still on the fifth column and we ran that now, we would get a alphanumeric sort, which case the 1156 will be sorted before the 1200. And the 1287 
alphabetically appears before the 132. So you now see the difference between an alphanumeric and a numeric sort. Now should any of the numbers have a decimal point, you would have to use something other than a long, because longs can only contain whole numbers. So you would take exactly the same approach where the value was a single, having a decimal point. The only difference being is you would prep your tag array as being a single. And the rest of the logic would be exactly the same as it is for longs. The same for doubles and the same for currency variables. So we now have a generic routine that handles strings, longs, singles, doubles and currency. The other thing we want to put at the end is something to handle where you've passed it something that it cannot handle. In this case, an invalid sort type. So should you pass something which it can't handle, it will pass back an error of invalid sort type. The function will return false and it would exit the function immediately. Otherwise, at the end, it will return true. So we now have a generic function that can handle sorting most kinds of arrays. This gives us a lot more flexibility when it comes to sorting arrays. Hopefully you'll find this useful. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.